Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. It's really nice to be here, and uh, I love you too. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. It's it's really nice to be here. Finally, uh, yeah, it was a long flight. Thank you, Nita, for getting me here. Thank you, Isha, for having me over here. And uh, we were detained at the airport as always for an hour and a half, which was nice. Yeah, it's, it always happens. It's nice. You know, whenever I start feeling too arrogant about myself, I always take a trip to America. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, Ameri the immigration guys kick the star out of stardom. And, uh, but I, I, I have my small victories. You know, they always ask me uh, how tall I am, and I always lie and get away 5 feet 10 inches. Yeah. Next time I'm going to be more adventurous. What color are you? I'm going to say white. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. So <clears throat> I'm supposed to be serious here because this was students and kids. So, first of all, let me just thank uh, the faculty and students of the Yale University. Fellows of Timothy Dwight College and the Chubb Fellowship and Master Jeffrey Brenzel for being so kind. Thank you. Uh, Yale Office of International Affairs and uh, the Yale South Asian Society. And of course, Isha for dealing uh, and following up with the most disorganized and incommunicative person in the world, which is me, to fix today's meeting with you all. I'm really, really happy, very humbled, very honored, and thank you for having me over here. Okay, I have memories of, I've, I've been here before, five years ago I was here in Yale, I was doing the song, some of the shots, uh, you know, the ones uh, at the graveyard, uh, they were shot here, and uh, no, I'm <laughs> being honest, yeah, uh, and it was very cold, it was I think 5th or 6th of December, it was snowing here, and I remember I was doing a song from Kabhi Alvida Na Kena, in the middle, yeah. <laughs> and I was, I was trying to kiss Rani Mukherjee. Uh, while mouthing the words. We do that in Bollywood for all the guys who don't know how it is. Yeah, we sing songs and we try to kiss girls at the same time. And, uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm being honest, my mouth froze in the middle of Kabhi Alveda Na. Yeah, I, I had a log jaw. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping my second outing to Yale is a little better because otherwise it just won't sound right if I was to get stuck on. I don't know what you guys call yourselves. Yale Tides, Yalers. It, it, yeah, yeah, that. But I, I, I hope I don't get stuck at yeah and go beyond that. Eh? So I was told not to dwell too much <clears throat> on my movies when I spoke to you. I am to give you an inspirational talk, tell you stuff you can think about when you leave this room. Now that worries me, it gives me performance anxiety. About 1500 of you here hoping to hear words of wisdom from this sexy, desirable man <laughs> who couldn't kiss a girl last time he was in Yale because it was too cold. But I am, I want, I want to tell you right in the beginning, I'm not that guy. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I mean, I'm sexy and desirable, but I'm, <laughs> but I'm not about to leave you any more inspired than you were when you walked in here. And uh, I did this lame joke on Google. Yes, I, I go to Google and search everything there. Even my next script I'm searching on Google now. Um, and the joke was like this. A dying man gasping for breath desperately gestured to the priest by his side for a piece of paper. With great effort, he then wrote a few words on it, handed it to the priest and passed away. The priest kept the paper in his pocket and forgot all about it until the final service. Here he suddenly recalled the dead man's last scribble. Unfolding the paper, he told the funeral congregation that he was about to read great words of inspiration from the dying man. He opened the paper. The piece of paper had these words on it. You are standing on my oxygen tube, you fool. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm going to be kind of like that priest. Don't expect words of wisdom from me. I'm just going to tell you my life's journey in very simple words and which may not leave you inspired but will help you survive this life. And if you can do that, kids, if you can survive, happiness, creativity and success will follow on its own. Only I hope my words will give you enough insight when you hear the story that I have to tell you that you can tell the world, world, move over, you're standing on my oxygen tube, I need to breathe, yeah. So journeys can be defined by age <clears throat> and time or even by destinations as most often they are. But I feel it's hard for me to tell you the story of my life in those terms because the concept of time has always eluded me. The day my father died seemed longer than my entire childhood. The day I felt my first success seemed fleetingly hour long, not long enough perhaps. I wondered where it went. Even the cycle of time confounds me. I work the dark, I work the dark until sunrise on most days and fall asleep as the world awakens to light. My friends call me an owl. 
I like to think of myself as Bat, Batman, the Prince of Darkness. I, 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 some of you would know I have a superhero fetish, yeah, so I keep bringing this back. Age, age is not my forte either. I still cannot fix my own. Am I 45 or 15? If I could, would I be romancing girls one third my age who normally would call me uncle? I had so much fun collecting the action figures of my last film called Ravan that, yeah, that none of the critical reviews tanking my film affected me at all. And as for my destination, I don't think I ever knew one. I walk, I run in the direction of my dreams, things change along the way, people change, I change, the world changes, and even my dreams change. I don't have a place to arrive, I just keep doing what I know how to do the best that I can do it. I'll probably end up deluded, a geriatric, in a wheelchair, wearing a cape and tights, imagining my... So I'll tell you story, but I'll tell it in my own way. In the language of my perceptions, in the things I think matter beyond fame, success, and the dying of my gray hair. I have understood and nothing else matters. If you take anything out of it, good. Otherwise, I've been told by the master, I can put on music and dance for you on Chamak Chalo. Okay, so first of all, yeah, we do that later. I know, I know. I, you know, people call me to these serious places and then say, oh, forget everything, just do the dance and go back home. Yeah. But I insist you listen to me, okay? <laughs> okay, I, I want to tell you, I have, I have, I have to uh, uh, <clears throat> tell you that I learned a few big words because I was coming to Yale, okay? Uh, yeah. On Google, of course. And I... <laughs> So the first one that I'm going to tell you about, so there are three things I'm going to tell you about this evening. Um, the first one is I'm going to tell you to be a funambulist. Now, yeah, that's a big way, yeah? Impressed? Oh, yeah. So that means a tightrope walker, because a lot of you people, actually all of you, are somehow are, the, uh, are going to create things in your life. So a funambulist is like a type tightrope walker, okay? So the first word, Alan, please give me claps for this new word that I've taught Yale. Yeah. Okay, however I look at it in its eventual analysis, my life has centered around my creativity. I have assimilated the world through creative expression and in return the world has experienced me hopefully. I've grown to understand that on one hand the world will always uphold creativity as the most honest feeling possible. On the other hand, the potence of fame, the glitz, the glamour, the wealth that arise from this very recognition of creativity will always be questioned. Why do we do that? Because sometimes it allows us to feel better than the creator and sometimes it fills a void within us that comes about by being in awe of his or her creation. Either way, it enables us to quantify his or her engagement, engagement with the world around him. I am an actor. My life is a testament to this duality. George Burns said that acting is all about honesty. If you can fake that, you've got it made. And he couldn't have defined it better. Honest and fake, yes, that's what I feel as a creative person all the time. Let me tell you my schizophrenia. Creative expression comes from the deepest experience of the artist himself. A good artist cannot be separate from his creation. Good art is honest art. A man may be an artist, a writer, a sculptor, an actor, or a totem pole carver. Whatever he is, if what he creates is true to himself, it becomes a vivid testimonial to human creativity. If it lacks honesty, it is entire its entire premise is a waste. At the same time, and quite paradoxically, a man becomes distinct from his creation from the moment it is placed in the public domain. It no longer even belongs to him. So it comes from your gut, and it is put out there for others to accept it or throw it in the gutter. Many a nights I have gone back home after receiving an award, pumped up and all happy, and just to read on the internet that what I really deserved was the golden banana for the worst actor of the year award. Yeah, it's called Kela Awards or some shit like that, yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I become heartbroken, angry and completely convinced that bananas and critics both should have their skins peeled and fed to the monkeys. I momentarily lose my ability to give and close up. And here's where the trick is. When you are in this place of despair, when you walk out of this college, this university and walk the path of life, where the world is tearing you down into yourself. There's only one thing you can do to survive. Hang on to who you are inside. The world will be unkind to you. It will not be able to see you. 
You must learn at such times to be able to see yourself. Life as a creative person is like walking on a tightrope. I have to keep balancing. I have to keep the balance. I begin to lose myself in my own melodrama. It is frustrating that I find myself living up to other people's interpretation of what I ought to be. And when faced with dissent or unappreciation, I start losing my love affair with my own audience. It becomes a tight balance act to keep doing what I do best and not be bothered by the reactions of the people I do it for in the first place. I dance harder, I cartwheel longer, and I pirouette on my rope, stretched taut beneath my feet, and I try not to slip. I can slide but never fall. And all this while, I have to keep a smile on my face and keep signing autographs and taking pictures. And why do I do this? Because I'm a funambulist, trying to balance my action and exterior reaction to my naked show of who I am inside. Yet when I'm playing this real-life illusion out, more often than not, my honest self is sitting in the audience applauding my performance while laughing heartily at my own stupidity. So my little kids and friends here, learn to laugh at yourself too. Never become cynical about yourself or your life. Becoming cynical about your life is the single most destructive thing you can do. For you have to remember, Creativity is your gift to the world. It was never meant to be barter for anything, not even appreciation. You have to dig deep. I do it, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, I do it while drinking vodka and listening to really sorry songs. <laughs> but you guys have to find less destructive ways to do this. <laughs> At least till you become my age. <laughs> but you have to believe that you create only because this is the biggest gift you have to give to your world. And maybe that's why we even call God a creator. It's not about the cars or houses, it never was. These are peripherals. They never come about because of your talent or your creative outpourings. They come out of a business that people around you do. Those people are in the business of barter, not you. Yours is the business of giving and learning. Your work of art may never be complete in your lifetime. Your fulfillment will always lie in your creative expression, not in its product. So look beyond the brickbats, the critics, and know within you that you always have a choice between barter and creation. Life as a creator will always be a tightrope. So do not try to feed your stomach with creativity. It is food for the soul, not your stomach. Do not be afraid to defy conventions. Do not be afraid to destroy systems that kill art and your souls. Do not be afraid to be hungry. And do not be afraid to walk alone if necessary. Because on a tightrope, we all walk alone. And remember, if you are a creator, you are a funambulist. And not very many people know what it means, let alone be it. So be a phenomenalist is my prayer to all you creative people here at Yale tonight.